Hey out there, it's Dave Duford at BuyLifeInsuranceForBurial.com where I help people like you with their final expense and burial insurance needs. I want to thank you so much for joining me today on today's topic, which is qualifying for burial life insurance with the diagnosis of kidney disease and or dialysis treatment. So the purpose of today's topic is to go into a, a very educational, detailed, deep dive about what your options are to qualify for dialysis or qualify for life insurance if you have dialysis or some form of kidney disease. So make sure you're taking notes because we're going to cover a lot of different topics in this uh, discussion today. And the goal of this particular training is to leave with you having a better understanding of what your options are that you can qualify for regarding final expense burial insurance. So if you are looking for life insurance coverage for yourself or a loved one and you've had a history of, of from acute minor kidney problems to major severe kidney disease and you want to know more, this particular training is going to be perfect for you. So make sure you uh, stick around and uh, get to learning. So uh, let's talk about an overview of today's training. So first of all, you're going to a little bit of, learn a little bit more about myself if you don't know me yet and my company, Buy Life Insurance for Burial. Uh, we're going to talk uh, after that more specifically about some of the most common um, relations to the kidney disease question. Of course, there's all sorts of variations of kidney disease. We'll hone in on the most common, most frequent kidney diseases and then uh, kind of give you some education and background because what that's going to help me understand or help you understand better is how different life insurance companies underwrite the different stages and different formations of kidney disease. It depends on the type of kidney disease that you have as to what kind of coverage you're going to get. So as we get further in this conversation, um, we're going to go into the nitty gritty so you can better understand what your life insurance options are and then I'm going to give you my thoughts on eligibility based on the different kinds of kidney disease types. So if you have uh, acute kidney injuries or if you have chronic kidney disease and depending on which stage it's in, if you take treatment, you're going to get my thoughts as an agent who's dealt with thousands of people on why or why not you should get coverage and under what circumstances. And then I'm going to actually show you some example premiums for different amounts of coverage, most common amounts of coverage purchased. Again, with the idea of facilitating uh, an understanding of what it actually comes down to based on the kind of coverage you can qualify for, as well as the cost of said coverage. So again, you can get an idea of what you can afford and what it's going to take to get the kind of coverage that you want to get. And then lastly, I'm going to summarize with some next steps so you know exactly uh, what the next steps are to get you, getting you qualified for some kind of life insurance for burial and final expenses. So, a little bit about myself and my company. My name again is David Duford. I have been a licensed life insurance agent since back in the day in 2011. I've owned BuyLifeInsuranceForBurial.com since 2016. And uh, nationally, I've helped over 3,000 people in my uh, uh, period of time. I've been a, a final expense insurance specialist. Uh, encountering all sorts of people with all sorts of health problems and conditions and helping them find some sign, kind of life insurance solution based on their needs. Uh, I've also am very involved in training agents in addition to helping people like you who are watching this. So my experience uh, lends me to get all sorts of perspectives across the country, but to put in place my training to help more agents like me help more people like you. And uh, I've also uh, am a published author of the best-selling official guide to selling final expense uh, insurance, where again I uh, give out all the training to help agents learn how to ethically help people with life insurance needs as it relates to final expenses. I'm also an active contributor for articles on the insurance forum, and as you see on this video here, I'm an active contributor on my YouTube channel. I have several thousand subscribers. And I create videos as it relates to training for life insurance agents on final expense insurance, as well as educational videos for consumers like you to help you get an idea of what your options are for life insurance for burial reasons. Okay, so let's get into it. We're going to talk today again about kidney disease and um, dialysis and its implications on qualifying 
for burial insurance coverage. So again, the key thing here is before we get into the major details of what we can qualify and what we can't qualify is understanding first what kind of kidney disease that you have and why that particular disease gives you certain implications for coverage versus others. So we're gonna kind of break down the basics. We're not gonna to get too detailed with the disease types or the variations of kidney disease. We're gonna break down the different kind, kinds of kidney disease most common, talk about some of their causes, uh, why they do what they do, and uh, you know, just kind of the overall summary of each. And we're gonna range it from mild to terminal issues. And again, we wanna know uh, what kind of insurance carriers are gonna give you the proper kind of coverage. So it's important that we cover these variations in kidney disease right up front so you can kind of better determine where you're at in your eligibility for insurance. And again, ultimately we'll discuss which carriers will offer the best options for coverage again based on your kidney diagnosis. So let's get started. Okay, so let's first start in talking about acute kidney injury, sometimes called acute kidney failure. So what is an acute kidney injury? Well, an acute kidney injury is defined as a sudden injury to the kidneys. Now, it's not necessarily something that's chronic. You can live your whole life not have any kidney problems, and under certain circumstances, you can get inflicted with one of these acute kidney failure, or AKIs, as we call them for short, and um, be inflicted with this kind of kidney problem. Uh, but we don't commonly associate this with more of the chronic uh, underlier uh, issues with kidney problems, such as dialysis, or I'm sorry, diabetes, and high blood pressure, persistent high blood pressure. Um, many cases, the good news about acute kidney injuries is that they're, they're short-term afflictions. So you're not going to have, in most circumstances, an acute kidney problem turning into a chronic kidney problem. Many people have recurring acute kidney injuries uh, due to underlying problems that um, they cannot control to get into in a second. And, uh, but there are circumstances to where repeated acute kidney injuries or acute kidney failure can result in chronic long-term kidney disease. So it's something that uh, is, is, is a potential for a chronic problem, but isn't necessarily in the beginning a chronic problem, therefore why it's called acute. Now, he may be wondering, so what causes acute kidney injuries? Uh, real simple, um, there's the most common issues are damage to the actual kidney tissue itself. So a lot of the times, um, a negative interactions with drugs can cause uh, kidney, acute kidney issues. Uh, maybe if you have um, allergies or, or anything like that towards certain kind of medications, kidneys can uh, go into an acute failure type of situation. Also, uh, progressively worsening infections can cause uh, temporary or acute kidney failure and also radioactive dye. A lot of times when you go in and if you're having dye put through your blood because they're trying to analyze your blood maybe for cancer or for some other disease, you will ask if you have some sort of allergy to it because if you do, sometimes those kidneys will shut down and cause problems. Also obstructions uh, for urine exiting the kidney can cause acute kidney failure. The most common reason, of course, is kidney stones. If you've ever had kidney stones, um, you don't want kidney stones. Let me put it that way. It's like uh, I am told that for men, it's like giving birth. So uh, use your imagination and uh, squeal in pain, <laughs> and, but hope that you never have it if you're a man. And also enlarge prostate. So these kind of things, especially repetitively, will cause these acute kidney failure type of situations. Now, a lot of the times when you have an AKI, they, uh, the docs make you stay overnight and monitor the situation, and eventually you're released as, as the AKI resolves itself over time. But sometimes I have seen personal clients of mine as well where they had a case of an AKI, but the infection was so bad or the, the reaction was so negative that for a temporary period of time, the, the patient, the client, required some form of dialysis. I met a lady down in Alabama. Uh, she was around 80 years old, and I believe her acute kidney injury was caused by some sort of uh, medication she took. So they hospitalized her for a while, and they ended up putting her on dialysis for three months. So she had it for a good bit, 
And But she came off of it, which was incredible because a lot of people, as we'll get into, permanently take dialysis because their kidneys are just so failed that they're never coming back. But in this case, it's acute. Acute means short term. It doesn't mean long term, which is the definition of chronic. So uh, these things usually um, resolve themselves. Of course, you don't want dialysis if you can help it, but it is something that eventually fixes itself. Now, chronic kidney disease, let's talk about that. So this is a little different. So chronic kidney disease is defined as the gradual loss of proper kidney function. Now, you don't have to necessarily have immediately di dialysis in order to be a chronic kidney disease patient. Uh, I have met dozens of people who have chronic kidney disease or renal insufficiency and they have no apparent signs of outward issues as it relates to their health. They're not on dialysis. They may not even be on some sort of um, water pill or some sort of medication specific to the kidney problem. Uh, their doctors have just noted that they had a diagnosis of a kidney disease, a chronic kidney disease, where their function of the kidneys have slowed down but are still functional enough that they can operate on their own. And usually it does become more apparent with time that there are issues. Again, initially it's not so much of a problem in many cases. However, as time goes on, it, it can become more obvious and more significant and ultimately need more uh, treatment and more active treatment. Uh, a lot of the times chronic kidney disease is not something that's caused on its own. It's an underlying problem, another health issue that causes the kidney disease to begin with, the chronic kidney disease. The most, the most common circumstances uh, include uh, diabetes and um, high blood pressure, and, and more specifically, uh, diabetes that is untreated, that's unregulated. See, diabetes cause, the reason people are so, doctors are so um, concerned with managing diabetes as quickly as possible is because if you're diabetic, the diabetes and how it's caused, it ends up affecting all sorts of other things except beyond your blood sugar. And so that elevated blood sugar affects, for example, your, your nerve endings in your feet and your, and your limbs. That's called diabetic neuropathy. It wears down the nerve endings. And it also causes disease in the kidneys, uh, nephropathy as it's called. And so a lot of times diabetes is the underlying precursor as well as persistent high blood pressure. A lot of people go through life not knowing they have high blood pressure, it's unmedicated, and again, they operate and live life fine with no apparent side effects or issues until one day they have kidney problems and they find out that this persistent high blood pressure has caused kidney serious kidney problems and many times it's irreversible. However, the good news is, is a lot of times you can take medications to control this, to stop the progression of uh, a regression or bad, increasingly bad circumstances of chronic kidney disease. Also, recurrent kidney infections can cause it, polycystic kidney disease as well. There's a lot of rare or not as common conditions that cause chronic kidney disease, but my experience has been in, in dealing with final expense clients, it's, it's this usually high blood pressure, diabetes, or even a combination thereof. So um, worst case scenario, um, you, you treat the underlying issue, and in some cases, if, if, if the chronic kidney disease progresses, you'll ultimately end on, up on dialysis, which is our last point of conversation, is end-stage kidney failure, which requires dialysis. So the most severe form of kidney disease is when the kidneys cannot filter out waste. And um, of course, kidney disease is a, a stretch of a progression of that, that process of cleansing the kidneys worsening and not being as effective. But ultimately, by the time you get to an 85 to 90% uh, loss of your kidney function, you're, you're diagnosed with end-stage kidney failure. And the common treatment, of course, is to put the patient with this on dialysis. So dialysis is essentially, it does the same thing a kidney does. Uh, it's amazing technology and it removes the waste from your body. You know, your kidney is like a giant filter. It, it removes waste, it removes salt, it filters out harmful chemicals, it keeps chemicals in balance, it regulates your blood pressure. And, and using a dialysis machine and going to dialysis several days a week operates and achieves the same goal. Of course, it's tough, of course, it takes a long time to be hooked up to pins and needles, it's no fun. My mother is a dialysis nurse, so I know all about 
kidneys and all the problems associated with it. And, and unfortunately, when you have end-stage kidney failure requiring dialysis, it is a permanent treatment. Uh, you cannot stop it or you will die. In many circumstances, your body just stops functioning because if the kidney function is not there, all the other parts of the body tend to go out of whack as well. All right, so let's talk about how different companies rate different levels of kidney disease because of the three circumstances I discussed, acute kidney failure, chronic kidney disease, and then end-stage renal failure requiring dialysis, there's different levels of qualifying for life insurance or burial insurance depending on the severity and the particular condition the client has. So in this particular section, we're going to break down what your options are, but what that's going to require is, is a further drilling down of the specifics as it relates to when this person was diagnosed, what treatment they have, and some other factors which we'll discuss because that's ultimately the job of the insurance agent like myself is to drill down to figure out what these different ailments and conditions are so again we can better understand what the options are and then um, recommend a solution that will be the best ex combination of price and coverage. So with acute kidney injury there's several factors that you have to consider to determine insurability. So let's uh, Let's go to the now and talk. So first of all, how long ago did the acute kidney injury happen? So the length of time in which has passed since the AKI is pretty important. So we'll dive into that in a second. What caused the AKI to happen? Now this is important. Again, usually kidney injuries, acute kidney injuries are caused by circumstances outside of the kidneys functioning themselves, such as the blockage, uh, prostate enlargement, drug use, that kind of thing. How long was the applicant hospitalized due to the AKI? So, so some companies look at hospitalization length of time. We'll talk about that in a minute. And then also we have to consider the dialysis question. Again, AKIs can require temporary, AKI, uh, temporary dialysis treatment. How long, however, um, we need to know when that was and how long it's been. All right, let's get to it. So let's talk about the length of time since the actual acute kidney injury event. So if the AKI occurred and no dialysis was given, so that's the big condition here, generally the applicant may qualify for preferred or standard pricing with many final expense burial insurance companies. So what does this mean? This means that if you had uh, a, let's say, a um, kidney stone, and from that kidney stone you developed this acute kidney uh, injury, uh, what I'm saying is that that should have no bearing on your eligibility to qualify for final expense burial insurance. Same thing with an enlarged prostate, as long as it's not cancerous, of course, if it's just enlarged and that contributed towards an acute kidney injury event, um, it should not have on, its, on, on just that alone, should not have any bearing. Um, a couple of examples here, um, I've talked to all sorts of people with kidney stones I've had all sorts of people with prostate issues and they will get these acute injury events and um, you know they just don't have any bearing uh, with most companies. I'm not going to say across the board that they don't matter, but the ones that I'm thinking of and I have in mind, um, if I had a client that approached me like this, I don't think there would be any sort of bearing on whether or not they would be eligible for preferred or standard, but depending, preferred or standard pricing. But that, of course, depends on the other health factors as well, because it's always a unique combination of factors. You got to talk to the individual first, uh, drill down on their health to figure out what they're qualified for. Now, lengthy hospital stays may limit coverage uh, to guaranteed issue coverage or at best graded coverage. So what this means is we'll talk more about this in a minute. Um, this is a rare circumstance. I have companies that don't care about hospitalization stays. Um, as long as it's not related to one of their knockout questions. And AKIs aren't knockout questions on many applications. So I don't see this as being something that is a huge issue. In worst, worst case scenario, somebody's hospitalized and the only option for the carrier because of other health issues, cancel out or, or, or disregard other carriers, that may be a last ditch effort. We'll talk more about what guaranteed issue means in a minute. Um, so yeah, we'll discuss that. So what? Okay, so the next thing we have to consider is what actually caused the acute kidney injury to happen. That does have some kind of impact at certain times 
on uh, what your eligibility for final expense life insurance will be. So sometimes the health event behind the AKI is explained briefly a moment ago, can affect your ability to qualify for burial insurance more than the actual AKI event itself. It's kind of funny, a lot of these kidney problems are in, in that kind of category where we have to see what actually caused the problem for the kidneys to have this particular acute or chronic disease. And that has an, an interplay within the eligibility for qualification. So perfect example, let's say we have somebody who is taking illegal drug use uh, or illegal drugs and or prescription pain medications and they overdose and they cause this acute kidney type of injury. Um, you, look, that's a circumstance where drug use or illegal drug use or overdosing has a clear and present immediate um, impact on your ability to qualify for life insurance coverage. So like in this circumstance, we would only be looking at some sort of guaranteed issue type of coverage. Uh, again, not because of the acute kidney injury, but more because of the illegal drug use. Uh, however, again, this circumstance is rare. Uh, as long, it, it doesn't really happen that often that the actual underlying factor is, is plays a big role with AKIs. As precursors to AKIs like enlarged prostate or kidney stones usually do not have any sort of impact on potentially qualifying for preferred or standard burial insurance rates. So take this with a grain of salt. I'm not intending to scare you here. It's just that yes, it could have a problem uh, as a potential to qualify for coverage, but in many cases it's not. So last, or one of the last things here is to talk about is the length of hospitalization. Again, like we discussed um, many times when you're uh, qualifying for coverage, they're gonna wonder at what length of time you're in the hospital. Um, again, the longer, there's a certain period with different companies, the length of time that you're qualifying for coverage uh, if it's a long time, uh, it can uh, prevent you from qualifying for anything other than a guaranteed issue carrier. But some carriers, and this is why I'm an independent agent, um, at buylifeinsuranceforburial.com, the key thing that I provide is independent analysis of which carriers are going to give you the best quality of coverage for the best premium. And so when I can, what I, that really means is that if I have one company that only gives you a higher price with not as good uh, terms for coverage, whereas this other company will give you the best deal and it, they have different health questions, but company B is better than company A, I'm going to go to that one. So when it comes down to selecting the best life insurance product, you wanna work with an independent agent for that reason. And in this particular circumstance, the reason I'm mentioning the hospitalization aspect of it is that certainly it can have an impact. Um, especially if you've been ho overnight hospitalized within the last six, 12 months. But like I said, there are carriers that have no such restrictions. What they're more concerned about is the underlying event that caused the hospitalization. So for example, if someone had a heart attack and they were overnight hospitalized or a stroke, that's what they're gonna be concerned about is, oh, you had the stroke, we're not gonna qualify. Your only thing you're gonna get is guaranteed issue or something like that because it happened yesterday. Uh, whereas the AKI itself causing the hospitalization generally is not a knockout type of situation, um, assuming, of course, there's the other combination of health issues don't interplay negatively. Um, last point here, and this is more of a rare circumstance, but it is something that does happen, is the length of time since the last dialysis treatment. So we talked about how AKIs in some circumstances can cause the patient to have a temporary dialysis treatment schedule, sometimes for a couple of months, and then as their, as their kidneys are restored and their operating capacity, then they're off of dialysis. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> if, you can, if you can get off of dialysis, it is, it is a nice thing. This is a little bit more tricky, however, because the dialysis is one of those tougher to place type of patients. If you're on dialysis permanently, hang tight. We're gonna talk here in a moment about what your options are. But for those of you with a temporary type of situation, a little more tricky. So almost assuredly, if you've had dialysis treatment for an acute kidney injury within the past 12 months, you're gonna get probably the best option being a guaranteed issue whole life insurance plan. Again, we'll talk more about that in a minute. Uh, the idea is that there's no health questions asked. There are some fine print deals. We'll talk about that momentarily. However, once a year or two is up, you may have access to more insurance options that will give you either graded or preferred coverage. Again, this is where being an independent agent 
is useful. When I talk to my clients and if they tell me they've had an AKI and they took dialysis and it's been a number of years, my job is to go look at all the carriers that I work with and read their particular underwriting questions. Many of the carriers say, have you ever taken dialysis? Well, those carriers would be out. However, there are carriers that said within the past X number of years, have you had dialysis? So with that said, if the patient or you are not on dialysis and it's been past that carrier's length of time that they require, it's highly likely that you'll qualify for their preferred standard or graded type of coverage. So the good news is, in many circumstances, there are more options for better coverage the longer the time has been since the AKI and definitely since the dialysis treatment. Again, I tell you this just as a, a rule of thumb to be candid with you. I can't underwrite somebody you know, sight unseen without talking to them. I have to speak with them, ask them a series of health questions to determine potential for insurability. And this plays no difference here. It's the same circumstance. Uh, your health is unique. You need somebody to ask you health questions like myself to figure out what your options would be and what the quotes would be. And again, I can help you with that. You see the number down there. If you did want to call 888-626-0439, you speak to me directly and I'll tell you how I can help you. Okay, so now let's move over to chronic kidney disease, renal insufficiency, renal failure. With chronic kidney disease, there are a few factors to consider when determining potential insurability. Two really, in, in particular, I'm looking at as, as, a, as a burial insurance agent. The first is original diagnosis of chronic kidney disease. And the second is what kind of treatment plans are in place for the chronic kidney disease. So let's dive first into the original diagnosis of chronic kidney disease. We gotta figure out when the diagnose, diagnosis actually occurred. Usually what happens with CKD, you go in, you do some kind of blood panel, or you do some like a creatinine test, or you deal with a nephrologist, uh, the, a kidney doctor, and they run a series of tests and they can determine what your level of kidney function is. And if it's below a certain threshold, then they'll officially diagnose you with chronic kidney disease. And they will tell you, they won't hide this fact from you, they will tell you flat out, you have chronic kidney disease, you have X percentage of kidney function. The reason this needs to be done, figuring out when the date occurred, is to figure out which carrier to work with that will give you the most value of coverage for the best dollar uh, monthly rate that you can. And some burial insurance coverage carriers may actually offer standard rates with those with C, uh, CKD under certain conditions, depending on their health factors. And um, I'll give you a perfect example. I met with a gentleman down in Alabama, and uh, he had, um, chronic kidney disease, his kidneys functioned at less than 50%. However, they functioned high enough that he did not have to have any sort of dialysis. It was not on the radar. As long as he took care of himself, took his medications, ate the proper diet, then he could continue to live life without a worsening of the chronic kidney disease or being put on dialysis. In my interview with him, to figure out what he could qualify for, it became apparent that he had very limited options. This particular gentleman also had a height weight problem. He was very heavy. Um, he also had some other ailments as well. So looking at these other companies, we couldn't find one that would fit the bill perfectly. However, in this circumstance, there was one particular insurance company. Their particular dialysis question reads as follows, or kidney question reads as follows. Um, have you ever had kidney disease or chronic kidney insufficiency requiring the use of dialysis? In this particular guy's circumstance, he could honestly say no. There was no other health questions related to kidney disease on that application. That was the only kidney disease question. He had kidney disease, but the question was what we call a combo question. It asks about kidney disease and dialysis, the combination of the two. And since he only had one of the two, you could answer that question no and not have any sort of rep, uh, you know, issues later on. And we were able to qualify him for preferred coverage at very competitive rates. And we actually lowered his coverage premium 
uh, about $1,000 a year. That's how dramatic the difference was. And because he worked with myself, and an independent agent, he was able to find this deal. Truthfully, no other company could provide because if his situation was very unique. That this was really the only solution. So uh, that's what you want. Otherwise, you're stuck paying a high price or you're waiting a number of years before your coverage gets full. In effect, when you ne don't necessarily have to. And life as it stands is uh, from second to second. We don't know when it's going to end, right? All right, enough of the uh, sad talk. <laughs> Let's keep talking here. Treatment for chronic kidney disease is the next uh, uh, section here we have to cover. So with chronic kidney disease, so there's, there's different kind of treatment plans for it. Sometimes there's treatment, sometimes there's not. It does have an ability uh, or it does affect your ability to qualify for burial insurance. Uh, and specifically what we're looking at here is the medications the applicant takes as well as the outpatient therapy as well. So it's like I mentioned earlier with chronic kidney disease, it is a treat, it is a condition that if, it's very much like diabetes. If, if the, the uh, patient takes the medication, follows the advice of the doctor, changes their health habits, they can manage themselves and not have a progressively worsening disease for diabetes or in this case, uh, chronic kidney disease. So a lot of the times these underlying factors with chronic kidney disease, um, the treatment for it isn't directly related to the kidneys as much as it's related to what caused the chronic kidney disease to begin with. So most commonly, chronic kidney problems are caused from persistent, many months or years of very high blood pressure and or progressively worsening diabetes. We talked about this earlier. A lot of kidney problems manifest from bad lifestyle decisions, uh, a life of eating too much, smoking, um, taking drugs, drinking too much, um, not going to the doctor regularly to manage and take a check on, on blood pressure. Sometimes the only time we get blood pressure checks, right, is when we go to the doctors. And there are plenty of people, and I can tell you honestly, plenty of men <laughs> who avoid the doctor at all costs. And, and sometimes high blood pressure problems are sitting there right under the surface and, and the patient doesn't even know it. And it's having all these long-term problems. So those are what we see as the most common reasons why people get chronic kidney disease. And in return, the treatments for these are your typical medications and, and treatment plans. So if you have diabetes and you have chronic kidney disease, you continue to take your medications. You continue to take your metformin. You eat healthy, you eat less sugar, you exercise regularly. If you have to take insulin, you take insulin. But you follow your doctor's plan of action. Same thing with blood pressure. If you're diagnosed with high blood pressure, you follow the doctor's advice of losing weight, exercising regularly, and making sure that you take your blood pressure medications on a consistent daily basis or however they're prescribed in order to reduce medicinally the high blood pressure into normal ranges because doing so prevents the stress on the, on the kidneys from worsening and that function dropping even further. So the key takeaway here is if the underlying cause of chronic kidney disease is under control and chronic kidney disease has not worsened, so it's maintained stable, which in many cases it can if you follow the directions of your doctor, you may qualify for preferred or standard rates for coverage, very much like in the acute kidney uh, injury type of circumstance. Again, depends on other health factors, depends on the companies that are available in your state, but many times you do have these options. So, um, and, and, however, sometimes, it, again, it just comes down to the companies, which is why, again, you work with an independent broker to figure out what your options are for burial insurance. Okay, so let's move on to qualifying for burial insurance with dialysis. So, what I'm talking about here is specifically people who are permanently on dialysis because of end-stage renal failure. And here's the bottom line, pulling no punches when it comes to qualifying for burial insurance. Uh, look, th your only option for coverage is going to be a guaranteed issue plan. So there's pros and cons to guaranteed issue plans. There's no other options that exist. You can literally apply with any normal health questions type of burial life insurance program and they will decline you because most of them have a kidney knockout question, especially 
a dialysis knocked out question. And so before we get into the details of how these plans work, by design, a guaranteed issue, no questions asked life insurance plan essentially guarantees your insurability as long as you fit within the range of ages or the age ranges that are there. Um, so um, continuing, let's talk about life insurance eligibility for each kidney disease case. So I will specifically break down what type of each, each case does or in whatever disease circumstance you have, how, how the program works, how the life insurance works, and then tell you what the pros and cons are. And then lastly, I'll give you my opinion as a life insurance agent who's helped people with burial insurance since 2011 on each type of coverage and in what cases it would make good sense to consider applying for said coverage. So let's jump into here. So, okay, back to the acute kidney injury options for qualifying. So as kind of discussed, beyond needing dialysis to treat acute kidney injuries, you most likely will not have any problems qualifying for quality burial insurance. So if, if that fits the bill, if you have an acute kidney injury, don't stress it too much. You're probably gonna be just fine. So most likely you'll qualify, barring any other health issues, what's known as preferred or standard rates for what's known as whole life insurance products. Uh, as you can imagine, the idea behind preferred is that the rates are better than a standard type of coverage. You know, it's like the difference between good and better, preferred and standard. Uh, preferred rates are the ideal rates, what you want. Those are the most competitive that the carriers offer. Then standard rates are kind of a step down where you will get quality coverage, but at a little bit of a higher rate. So you may be wondering, I mentioned it just a moment ago, what whole life insurance plans are. You may have heard of this term. You may wonder what it exactly does it mean? How does it relate to final expense? What's whole life final expense life insurance? And, and is it the same thing as burial insurance? So yes, that's the, the short answer is yes. They're all just different names for the same thing. But there's really a, a few core benefits to this style or, or, or type of life insurance plan. So let me explain to you how this works. So first of all, with whole life plans, your premiums never increase. So what that means is that once your premiums are, you see it and you apply and you get approved, assuming you get approved for the whatever rate you did, it's locked in place forever. The company contractually cannot increase the rate on you at any time in the near future. As long as you continue to pay the premiums and you keep the policy in force, the premiums stay the same. This is a great benefit for people on a fixed income or just people who have lived through life insurance coverage where they've seen dramatic price increases. Those usually are universal life plans or they're usually what's known as term insurance plans. The biggest benefit here is the guarantees that are associated with whole life insurance. So having your premiums locked in place is a great benefit. Second benefit is your coverage never cancels due to age or health. So again, as long as you pay your premiums, you cannot outlive the coverage because you get too old or your health changes or some kind of circumstance that in some other situations would cause you to lose your coverage. Again, I hearken back to the term insurance and universal life insurance plans. You may have heard of these kinds of insurance plans. Term insurance in, in this market, there's a lot of different life insurance uh, that offers term insurance. I've written about m those plans many times. Concept is simple. As the term insurance hits a certain age in many companies at 80 years old, you lose your coverage. Many times a term only lasts 10, 15, 20 years and as soon as you outlive it, the price goes up by literally 10 times and it continues to escalate even further than that. It's crazy. Same thing with the universal life plans. They, they're level for a period of time and then there's dramatic price increases. All of these things nobody wants, right? I mean, who wants to have to pay more for their life insurance? And many times the price increases come at such a later date in life where you're on a fixed income. You're receiving a meager social security payment. You've got other things going up. So people appreciate coverage that doesn't cancel or go up or go away. We need to have the assurances and peace of mind and a whole life insurance plan does that. And with preferred and standard prices, you can get first day full coverage. You may be able to qualify for first day 100% full coverage from the first payment date. That means as soon as you make the first payment date with whole life insurance plans, you're 100% fully covered. So that means if you die a day after the first payment end, you're covered for the entire amount of coverage of whatever it is that you got. Obviously the benefits here are great. 
you pay the premium, it doesn't go up. You pay the premium, you can't be canceled or gotten rid of. You pay the premium, and if you're qualified for preferred or standard, you're fully protected from the first payment. It's peace of mind in its purest form. Now, guaranteed issue is a little bit different. We'll talk about that in a minute. But why consider whole life insurance? Hopefully, I've made the case already, but just to reiterate the points, you know, whole life insurance, again, is great because you can't outlive this kind of coverage. The nature of why people buy life insurance, too, is because we're looking to solve problems, right? People don't buy life insurance because it's fun. You know, you can spend your money on all sorts of instant gratification items, but whole life insurance isn't one of them. You literally have to die before the benefit's really received. <laughs> Think about it. It's kind of crazy, right? So you really have to have a definable, measurable problem to buy any kind of life insurance. And with whole life insurance, the biggest reason is because you need the assurance and guarantee that your coverage is going to be there whenever you die. The key word is whenever. It could happen tomorrow. It could happen in 30 years. Other types of plans like term insurance are designed, like I said, to cancel at any future date or at a future date. And, and you got to ask yourself, are you a betting man? Are you a betting woman? Do you want to bet that you're going to die before your insurance cancels? Why get a plan if you know you need to have coverage when you could outlive it? It's a gamble. If you're buying the wrong type of plan and you're not fully aware of, of the circumstance and the reality of life, and that we don't know when it's going to end. And again, with whole life insurance, fixed premiums, design never increase, very attractive, great for a fixed income individual. So now let's talk about chronic kidney disease and how that works kind of shifting slightly here. It's a little bit more difficult than if you have acute kidney injuries to qualify for first day full coverage, but not that much different. Again, you just need to work with an agent that has a repertoire and different options available for coverage, and um, you'll have a better chance of doing so, may qualifying for preferred or standard rates. Again, many companies specifically put into their application that chronic kidney disease is an automatic knockout for coverage. Just be very well aware of that, that that does happen sometimes, but there is a small handful of coverage that may qualify you for chronic, uh, if you have chronic kidney disease for preferred or standard rates in some circumstances. Again, it just depends on your health and the other factors too. Can't say for sure on any sort of recording or video. It all comes down to your unique health factors and the only way to do it is talk to me personally. All right, so let's cover dialysis and qualifying for final expense life insurance. So dialysis treatment for end-stage renal failure is tough but not impossible to get burial insurance coverage. Like we talked about, the only option you're gonna have is no questions asked guaranteed acceptance life insurance. So you may be wondering, well, I've heard of this thing. I've seen the advertisements on TV for guaranteed acceptance life insurance. How does that actually work? So in short, as long as you, your age fits the age range to apply for the product, the company cannot deny you coverage, no matter what circumstances you have. You could be bedridden on your deathbed. As long as you can write your name, they approve you for coverage. Pretty nice, right? However, if you're a thinking person like me, you know that there's probably some kind of fine print issues that are worth discussing ahead of time and to be well aware of. So here's how guaranteed acceptance works. And anytime you see a modified life insurance plan, a guaranteed acceptance life insurance plan, a no, asked, no questions asked life insurance plan, these all work exactly the same. So first of all, all guaranteed acceptance burial insurance plan forces a limitation of full coverage. Typically it's for the first two years that if you die from any sort of natural causes that the full death benefit will not be paid out. Um, however, you're covered for accidental death. If you die from an accident, then you'll be paid the full death benefit. But if you die from natural causes, like most people do uh, in their latter years, then what's, what's refunded back to the premium is what you, to the beneficiary is the premiums, plus a marginal level of, of, of interest, which typically amounts to maybe uh, 10% sometimes 7%, not that much. You're just basically getting your money back and then a little bit more is how to describe it. So that may not sound appealing to you. You may have dialysis right now or your loved one that does and you're thinking, well, gosh, I don't want to wait two years. I need coverage immediately. Just like you said, Dave, right? Why wait? So good question. Why get it anyway? So let me try to put my persuasive hat on here <laughs> and, uh, tell you why you should strongly consider guaranteed acceptance life insurance. 
despite having dialysis or having a loved one who has dialysis. So look, dialysis is a permanent treatment. And all life insurance applications knock out dialysis except for guaranteed acceptance. So what you're faced here with is a permanent chronic condition that will not ever improve. It will always be there for the entire length of the applicant's life. And since your condition is permanent, your eligibility for final expense life insurance will never change. You'll always only have the option of a guaranteed acceptance policy. Does that make sense? Hopefully it does. On top of that, you'll get older, the prices will go up, and then if you get outside of the age range, you may not have any options whatsoever. So here's my point. The sooner you qualify for a life insurance policy, the quicker you begin to live through the required waiting period of the no questions asked life insurance. So the sooner you get that plan, the sooner the two years are through, the sooner you're covered, okay? Again, look at this in the big picture. Dialysis isn't going away. You know you need life insurance. And yes, if we understand the only options you have is a two-year wait, why wait to start one? Get on the boat as long as it's affordable and fits your budget. Then you can start the ball rolling on getting through that two-year period as quickly as possible. And the other thing, I hate to be grim here, but I'm trying to drive the point home in such a manner that I could uh, fully in, uh, um, invest you into the seriousness of the situation. I don't like to sell these uh, waiting period policies. I really want to get everybody a, two, a full first day coverage type of plan if I can. And, and I hate falling short for the client if this is all I can offer, but sometimes it is all I can offer. But to kind of make the point here, dialysis patients, if you look at the numbers, you look at the statistics, they only have five to 10 years left of life expectancy from the moment they start dialysis. That's not a lot of time. And that drives the point home, the sooner you start your life insurance plan, the better. Because we need to get you covered so you don't leave any sort of final burden to your loved one. So again, I'm not trying to guilt trip you. I hate that kind of sales stuff like that, but it's the truth and therefore it's worth mentioning. Hope you agree. Okay, so let's talk about what kind of premiums are available for different kinds of kidney diseases. You're probably wondering, okay, this sounds great, Dave. Thanks for giving me a good idea what we can qualify for, what my options are, what, what can I pay? What am I gonna look at? So now that you have a better idea of your final expense life insurance plan options, if you have a kidney disease, let's take a look at some potential premiums for preferred standard and guaranteed issue products. So a little bit of a, a side note here. Um, I, I intentionally did not mention the names of these companies. Uh, it's a practice in which the insurance carriers frown on to show their products and to show their premiums and to show their applications. So trust me, if you wanted to make a phone call to me, 888-626-0439 and have a personal discussion with me, uh, I'm happy to tell you which companies they are and let you do your due diligence. But just understand that I'm not trying to hide anything here. This is just kind of a compliance issue, I guess you could say. But um, on a personal basis, I'm more than happy to uh, tell you exactly what your options are and which companies that would work. So uh, let's get going in here uh, and look at the options. So for preferred premiums, uh, here's what you're looking at now. Now, let me explain this chart to you, maybe a little confusing. I just took every five years from 50 to 80. Of course, we can get you if you're between those ages that aren't there. The top age, uh, we can go higher than 80. We can go up to 85 for preferred and standard in some circumstances. We can go way lower than 50. In fact, we can start at 18 years old for preferred and standard premiums. So um, if you've got a, an a, a acute kidney injury, these are the kind of prices you're looking at. Again, we can go m less than 10,000 and more than 20,000 if you wanted a 5,000 plan or a 15 or anything in between or even a 30,000, we can do that. But I wanna just kind of start from somewhere and these are non-smoker rates for everything you're gonna see. If you're gonna smoke a rate that's a little bit higher premium, but again, this is a starting point just to get your mind wrapped around the price point because a lot of people get stuck and think it's going to be so expensive. I got kidney problems and it's really not. So this company I work with is out of Dallas, Texas, has been in business since 1958. And like I said, this particular product is available between 18 and 80. There are other ones that will go even up to 89. 
So, and they're available in most states. So there's your premiums. Uh, feel free to pause this video and go back and look at these if you wanna investigate further. Standard prices again, first day full coverage. Most likely will be eligible for a chronic kidney disease. Same company I just mentioned. Um, a little bit higher premium, but that's because it's a standard rate because you do have a chronic kidney disease situation. And then lastly here are the guaranteed issue whole life premiums. Um, there are no smoker rates for guaranteed issue. It's, it's whatever you, what sex you are, male or female, and then whatever your age range, and then whatever the corresponding premium for how much of a coverage you get is what the rate is. So um, same circumstance, we can go down to 5,000, go up to 25,000, anything in between. This is the product I would put people in uh, who have dialysis or other uninsurable problems. This particular company is headquartered out of New York City, been in business since 1919. And with this guaranteed issue product, the range for, for qualification is between 50 and 85. Uh, there are guaranteed issue companies that will go down to 40 and then 30, but generally speaking, this is what the range would be. And it is available in most states. And uh, as we wrap up here, um, I want to invite you, if you found this training useful to you, if you feel like you've learned a lot about your ability to qualify for, for life insurance and kidney disease, and you want to see what your unique health situation will actually qualify as related to final expense life insurance, then what you need to do are one of the following three steps. Very simple. So I prefer you to call me direct. I don't bite. I'm very easy to get to. Uh, I'm not a pushy guy. I just want to help you if you want to be helped. And if I can't help, then no, no problem. Call me direct at 888-626-0439 for a free no obligation quote. It literally takes like 10 minutes to get a quote. There's no cost to it. I'm paid by commission when I help somebody get a plan. There's no additional cost for my help. It's all tied into the payment of the, uh, of the taking of, out of the plan. So my advice is free. There's no cost to it. Even if you don't decide to do anything, at least I can give you an idea of what your options would be. Uh, or if, you pr if you're not the talking on the phone type, I get it. You wanna kind of feel it out by uh, email first, then go to buylifeinsuranceorburial.com forward slash contact. Send me a message that way. Uh, I will be happy to correspond with you initially via email. There may be a circumstance after a couple of emails that we need to talk over the phone to kind of drill down a little bit on different health issues. But if you feel better talking that way, totally fine with me. And lastly, if you're on a desktop especially, I think the smartphones have it too. In the lower right-hand corner is a chat box. Feel free to correspond with me that way. And uh, I'll be happy to speak with you instantly. And look, I can't stress enough, of course, I am a life insurance salesman. And uh, instead of putting, putting high pressure on people, I try to stress the reality of the circumstances that we're in. There's no better time to get life insurance than now. Why? Because you're not getting younger. And phrase, face it, your health will not be perfect forever. It will get worse potentially. And all of those factors have an upward effect on your premium cost. Whereas if you qualify for a final expense whole life plan, that locks your premiums in. So even if your health worsens or you get older, it's still the exact same amount as the day you took it out. These are great benefits with these life insurance plans. I know you're what if you've watched this video and you've read this article all the way through to this point, you're obviously very interested in this and you know you need peace of mind or you need peace of mind for a loved one. So do the right thing. Take action today and let me help you out. My name is David Duford at BuyLifeInsuranceOrBurial.com and thank you so much for listening. Take care.